Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Things are a little different in the background today. <laughs> I don't like posting my face on YouTube, but I am gonna have to start doing it if I want to um, do the things that I want to do on YouTube. <laughs> so um, I know it's a little Christmassy, but it's my fall Christmas tree, so it's okay. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you before I get into anything. You guys have been so supportive and so awesome about everything that I want to do. It's been over a year now and I've got over 3,000 subscribers and growing every single day. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. This is amazing. So um, in keeping up with that, I kind of want to respect you guys as viewers and let you know what I'm going through and why things have been a little bit lax as of lately. Um, I guess I'll just start at the beginning. Um, <laughs> I'm an animal lover. I have been my whole life. You know anything about me and my videos. Um, I've had my dogs in one of my videos. Um, it's been an ongoing thing with me. I, <laughs> my mother was super supportive in letting me and my sister have almost whatever animal that we wanted to bring home. And after my sister and I turned about 10, 11 years old, we met an amazing couple, an older couple, who had a farm and they got us animals, goats, chickens, ducks, a llama, donkey, and eventually a little horse. And that started a lifelong love and obsession and uh, something that will never leave me. Um, this is, you know, I've even worked with horses my whole life, so this has become something that's been very prevalent. So, um, when I was about 12 years old, I was in a feed store with my sister and my grandfather, and I was looking through one of these animal magazines they have, um, and I saw this beautiful black horse with a white butt and speckles all up his back and up his sides, and he was up until that point, the most beautiful animal I'd ever seen in my life, even in this old black and white magazine. Um, and I just fell in love. He, and his name was Wop Spotted. And he was an amazing Appaloosa. If any of you know anything about horses or Appaloosas, you know he sired some of the most amazing um, stud lines that have ever come out of an Appaloosa, in my opinion. In, in my opinion, he's very famous. Um, I fell in love and I vowed to myself that eventually one day I would have a horse like him and throughout my whole life you know I've been looking and not had the best financial situation and you know always had to do things for myself so when I got to the point where I was like okay um I know what I'm gonna do with my life you know this is what I want to do um I make a you know a, a good living you know, with uh, my animals. So I decided I was going to start looking for a horse. Um, I went through years of contacting people and sending out my little spiel, um, you know, kind of telling people what I was about and how, you know, how I've lived my life with horses. And I've experienced a lot of what the horse industry has to offer, good and bad. And this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. You know, a big, uh, Appaloosa sport horse. I love the Appaloosa, but they're a little tiny and <laughs> a little bit boxy for me. I want something tall. They could do dressage, jumping, um, event-like things. And I was coming up with a lot of, you know, boxy horses, quarter horses, which is fine, but not for me. Um, I'm a big kind of tall girl, um, regardless of all the extra, you know, padding that I have. So it was important to me to find something that I could be comfortable with and that um, could carry me for a while without having any kind of issues or problems. You know, big, solid, strong horses. And about, I guess it's about three years ago now, I got an email back from one of the random uh, emails that I sent throughout the internet, you know, just praying for this animal and this breeder to come to me. And I found her. She contacted me and we spent a good 45 minutes on the phone for the first time we talked. And she just said all these amazing things. She was not only a really responsible breeder, um, meaning she only has like two to six horses a year on average, um, and she also runs rescue. So all of the proceeds from her amazingly bred sport horses go directly to these animals. Um, and it just so happens <laughs> that um, uh, the son of Wap Spot, Wapazan, happens to be the almost exclusive stallion that she used. So it was such an exciting, amazing, wonderful time. I had found what I wanted. Um, go look Wapazan up. I'll put his link down below. He's a beautiful black um, snow cap Appaloosa stallion. And 
his babies are completely unparalleled in my in my opinion um, in the sport horse industry because they're big and beautiful and strong and powerful and I took some time off work and took the trek up last uh, two years ago now almost two years ago now to meet this woman and I put a down payment on a in utero foal um, with this wonderful Appaloosa mare big giant almost 16 two hand Appaloosa mare um, she was almost like a roan, uh, like a gray roan. She was beautiful. Um, and she was pregnant with a whoppy, a whop baby. And I put the money down and, um, was so hopeful. So we went around, you know, the next few months, you know, cause she wasn't still, you know, kind of big, but not ready to full yet. She went almost 12 months and, one morning I woke up to these amazing pictures of this beautiful but slightly um, slightly disappointing horse in my opinion at the beginning. So this is the baby that um, that came out. She, her name, uh, they named her Inca and she was a pitch black little girl. Um, I didn't want a solid color horse and I didn't want a girl. Um, so I respectfully declined the offer to buy this baby the first, you know, few weeks. So, uh, time goes on and, um, you know, we decided to put the money into this, the next foal that was going to come up. So, you know, waiting another two and a half to three years to see if she would take again, have a healthy baby time off and all that good stuff. Well, the owner of the barn <laughs> kept encouraging me to look at pictures and see this beautiful horse. And she was breathtaking I cannot lie you know even from the second I saw her she was beautiful if you're looking for this kind of horse she was everything you wanted but it wasn't until I saw her first video that she had posted and everything changed I again took time off work ran down the 14 hours to Virginia uh, West Virginia to see this beautiful horse and the second I saw her <sighs> I'm getting all teary. I'm sorry. Um, she was exactly what I was looking for. She, we bonded so almost instantaneously. It was like fireworks. She was everything I wanted um, in a horse. She was huge at even such a young age. Um, this, let me see if I can find a picture. These are the first pictures that I ever got with her. Um, she was this gorgeous thing. Um, she was so... Uh, you know, I, I can't even describe to you how wonderful she was. Um, it was just such an instantaneous connection. So um, everything was perfect. You know, I decided that I was going to take this beautiful mare. I named her Inca Wops Once Pitch Black because she did have little bits of flicking starting through her. Um, and it would have been awesome to see um, how she progressed and grew up. But um, unfortunately, about a month after she was weaned, um, she ended up hurting her leg. At first we just thought it was a sprain. It was no big deal. We put her in the stall. Um, it was, um, a little, you know, frightening. We had the vet up, but she wouldn't, you know, stand still for pictures. Um, by the way, this is a picture of, uh, <laughs> me with the mommy. Um, while Inca, this girl, uh, was still in the belly. So I got to even meet her before she was born. <laughs> um, and, um, unfortunately it turned out to be a, a very severe break in the back leg. Uh, we weighed our options and, you know, the responsible thing to do was to humanely euthanize her. And you guys, you can see it was very heartbreaking for me. Um, she was just under, just over six months and she was just such a wild beauty. She had so much go and spunk. It was just, all the other options just seemed very unfair to her. Uh, you know, I can't keep a little baby locked in a stall and give them absolutely no love and no, no room to run and play. Anyways, <laughs> um, unfortunately the decision was, you know, we had to, to make it and it was heartbreaking and <sighs> the inevitable had to happen. Um, bad stuff aside, I moved on and I decided that I was going to put down a next, uh, the next in utero with the same mother and the same father. Um, she was just such a winning combination with them. And, you know, she was just such a wonderful horse. And unfortunately accidents happen. That's the way things are, you know, in life, you know, we have these big things and we have to deal with letdowns and still be able to smile and, and get through the hard times. But the best thing in the world is that, 
I have another baby coming. This is uh, mommy all pregnant and fat and happy, and this is my little teeny baby blip. Um, I'm, as you can see, overjoyed and excited and happy about this. Um, my baby is going to be born um, in the beginning of May or end of April. Um, and I'm going to be taking some time off and going up there and for the birth and seeing all this. Um, I don't want children, to be perfectly honest. I want to give birth to my own children. So this is my child. This, I know, may sound weird to a lot of people. I'm probably going to get a lot of weird comments. But it really is. This is what I've been wanting my whole life. You know, since I was a little girl, I dreamed of this beautiful animal that could grow with um, me. And I could have for, you know, 30 plus years, you know, you know, as you can see, I'm tongue-tied because I can't wait for this to happen. But unfortunately, this is creating a lot more um, stress, good stress and bad stress. Because of what I went through, I'm trying to be extra prepared and extra cautious. I was smart enough to have insurance and things as bad as they were worked out very smoothly. Um, and so I'm trying to be even more prepared this time, you know, like uh, hope for the best and plan for the worst is kind of like my motto in life. And it's gotten me through up until this point. So um, that's what I'm going to be kind of stop my nail channel a little bit. As you can see, I've been working so much. My poor fingers are back to um, being kind of naked, never without polish, really. Um, I can barely stand to look at it without polish, but without extensions for a little while. I'm going to go the month of um, January without any extensions on my nails um, and do some water marble and do some fun stuff and show you guys how awesome it is to have amazing nail art on short nails and still catch people's eye. You don't have to have crazy claws or extensions or fake nails to get people to notice you and even on a budget. So <laughs> I, I really appreciate you guys working with me because in May I am not only going to be mostly stopping a lot of my nail art videos because I'm going to be busy. In August, the baby is going to come home here to my home state, New Jersey. Well, home state right now, New Jersey. Um, so I can see it every day and, you know, make sure it imprints correctly and I can watch over it because, you know, I'm going to be <laughs> really crazy about this. But that means um, at the end of August, all fingers crossed, everything prepared, the way I have it worked out, that means I'm going to be starting a new video and it's going to be growing up with my baby. Um, I want to be able to document and, you know, show people how um, I work with my animals and the love and connection I feel is so important, the gentleness, um, not just with horses, but with dogs and cats and all living creatures. Um, and I want to kind of share some of that love with you guys. So less nail art, more horse things. <laughs> I want to wish you guys a happy new year. This is, um, this is going to be a good one. The last couple of years have been great and not so great, but I have an amazing support and a wonderful team around me and I can't thank them enough. Um, and my family through being through with me through all of this chunk. Um, we're kind of unconventional, but we, we know what we have and we have each other. And that's been a really awesome thing to know. Um, you guys have been out of control of me <laughs> I still cannot believe that all these people just want to watch me paint my nails. <laughs> it's such an honor and such a blessing to have you guys. I know this is ridiculously long and I'm not going to edit any of it out. So um, please, as always, forgive my missed words. And um, I get a little excited and rush over my thoughts without stopping and focusing on what I'm saying. So um Thank you so much for the support. Um, please subscribe and look for my uh, upcoming channel uh, about my struggles and my time with my new baby, <laughs> new um, a new life choice, and uh, things are going to be changing for the better. Um, I love you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. This has been such an eye-opening experience to put myself out there to the public and um, not really having the best um, self-confidence when it comes to that kind of thing. This has been such an eye-opener and such a, a pleasure. And I cannot wait for new content. And I can't wait to show you guys more of what's going on in my life and um, get to maybe get to know you guys a little better too. Please make sure to subscribe or unsubscribe, like, unlike this video, leave your good comments, leave your bad comments. I want to hear from you guys. Um, thank you so much and have an amazing new year.